Hey everybody, Stax here. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today I am checking out X Force number seven by Benjamin Percy. Oscar Balzaldua is your artist, Guru Effects is your color artist, and Dustin Weaver and Edgar Delgado are your cover artists for this evening. But first, let's take care of some housekeeping. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you do that. About 60% of the people that watch these videos typically aren't. So guys, there's room to grow for the channel, right? So hey, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications. Also, you might as well, since you're doing that, go over and check out my X-Men Fantastic Four number one video and get all the details on how you can win that complete series once it is finished. That's right, once it's finished, one lucky winner, I will place all four issues in one box and ship it to you and it will be yours to keep forever. I'll put the link for it at the end of this video to make it easy. And also, if you guys want to have some fun and help me clown on one of my comic aficionados buddies, then uh, you should stick around for that too. All right, so let's get into X-Force number seven, guys. The book starts, it's being narrated by Sage, and she is talking and giving a report on absolutely incredible, just just incomprehensible shots of during assassinations that have been happening across the globe. Talking about a guy who is out on a speed boat, boat on choppy water, bouncing up and down, wind, there's a crosswind, everything, and this sniper shot goes right through this dude's head. It's a freaking impossible shot, but dude made it. She talks about another shot, about a pizza delivery guy, a guy delivering a pineapple and bacon pizza. Even with the strength of bacon, it does not balance out the pineapple. And you guys, according to the last video, Regarding this, you guys thought this was actually a justified kill. Well, most of y'all did. So they just laid down this guy. They laid down the delivery guy. They put a bullet through the pizza, and they put a bullet through this guy who was a, a X-Men supporter, a mutant supporter. He hit him with his absolutely impossible shot from across the road, and not only was it such a good shot just because the shot that he made, but there was a guy out um, doing some... What's it called? Jack Hammering. Yeah, I just had a brain cramp. Jack Hammering downstairs, so it completely muffled the sound or drowned out the sound of the shot, the the broken glass, the body stumping on the floor, all of it. Just in the and the gunman got away. The third one's just as crazy. This one actually probably more so. Uh, another mutant supporter pulls up. He's driving along, and well, this little red balloon with a kid chasing it floats out in the road the driver stops of course they stop right over a manhole cover bullet goes right up uh and out the top of his dome and sage says look other than the the calculus of luck these probabilities uh, this these chances are just absolutely insane they it, it shouldn't happen and you know domino just thanks her says thanks for doing this homework for me and Sage turned and actually asked her, hey, you asked me to look up these odds-defying crimes, but but why? And that's when Domino explains that, look, you know, see these? I used to be able to roll these every time and get a 700 box car. And ever since those those freaks, the, the Xeno guys, since they cut me up, I, it's always snake eyes. They stole my luck. And I figured it had to go somewhere. So stage set, get to the intro page. Now this caused a little bit of confusion when I read it because, uh, let me just read it and we'll go from there. Before X-Force was formed, Professor X sent Colossus and Domino on separate missions for the benefit of Krakoa and mutant kind. While Colossus was killed in Russia, Domino was sent to investigate a mysterious organization that calls itself Ex Zeno. I call it mispronounce it, Zeno. She was captured and skinned alive. Since then, Domino was rescued and her injuries treated with vegetative skin grafts. Colossus was resurrected but remains disturbed. Just like, what? Colossus died? So I was really concerned that I had missed something. So I went back, checked back X-Force 1 real quick. And I'm like, no, he, he didn't die. He was, he was injured and then he was sent to the healing gardens. And he was basically kind of in a vegetative state, just in shock, I guess, from everything that had happened. Now that Krakoa is a nation, should it be considered a vegetative state? Sorry for the sidebar. Well, for whatever reason, this made it in the book, but Benjamin Percy, the writer, he popped on uh, Twitter and he announced, look, Colossus did not die. All right, we're done with that. Let's get back to the book. We jump back to Domino and we find out that she is still dealing with the 
she's still trying to cope with what happened to her with um, with Zeno and them, them kidnapping her and them essentially skinning her alive and taking her skin off to use it to make skin grass for their soldiers so that they could infiltrate Krakoa. And just the pain, I mean, what they did to her was absolutely disgusting and absolutely brutal. And it should scar somebody. If, the, if, if this character came back and was perfectly fine, it would be extremely poor writing. But it really goes into how she is, um, she's unable to sleep. She can't sleep and she's haunted by these memories. And in order to cope with this, what she's been doing is she just goes for these extremely long, high-paced runs and basically just runs herself into the ground, runs herself into exhaustion. And while she's running, she's talking about a lot of things, but she has a really, really neat uh, line here at the end where she's talking about resurrection. And she says, resurrection has made it possible to choose a future that's unburdened by the past, a scarless existence. But sometimes we only really remember and appreciate our history if it comes with a scar. I'm glad for my scars. And she, she says that right as she's walking up on Colossus. And they both know what's going on right away. They both look at each other and, other and just at the same time say, you can't sleep either. And she, they just, they have this moment because they've been through the fire together. They've both been through so much pain and suffering. And uh, they just, they just click. And these two have been an item before, but they both kind of acknowledge that, look, I heard what happened to you. And Domino reaches out and puts her hand on Colossus's arm and says, you know, I would tell you that you're safe here, that you don't need to shield yourself like this. And he, he lets it, he lets the, the armor go away. And she then says, but you understand, don't you? And she, he reaches up, touches her face and says, yes, I understand. And it's a really sweet moment between the two. And then you get this flashback from Colossus just of everything that he went through, just tanks firing at him and, and you know him trying to save these children and just him in immense pain. And she says to him that I'm glad you're all right, Peter, given what you survived. And he speaks very honest in that moment. He tells her that, you know, if that were true, if we were all right, we wouldn't be up at two in the morning talking right now. And then they, you know, say, you know, everyone keeps telling me it was worth it. And Domino responds with, for Krakoa. And he responds in kind. And But then he stops her and says, you know, when people say that, when I say I did what needed to be done for Krakoa, they're acting like everything that happened in Russia is in the past, but it doesn't feel over. It feels like it's still happening. The memory feels like it will never die. From there, we jump to Sage and, and Domino, and they've had another assassination. This is the fourth one, and they're able to take a calculated guess as to where they believe the next attack will be based off where this guy's current or previous hits have been, uh, the time frame, the events that are going on in the area, where they there happens to be a pro-mutant guest speaker. They managed to put all those variables together and determine that this, were the, this is where the attack is gonna be. This is where this guy's gonna strike next. So she goes and wouldn't you know it, she happens to catch the reflection off this guy's scope as she targets in on this neck, on her next kill, his, her. And sure enough, Domino's there, scoops her up, covers her up and can begin to you know take the fight to this assassin. The chase is actually pretty cool. Um, he ends, uh, Domino ends up scooping up a snowboard, takes off after this guy. Um, they're firing back and forth. It's it's actually really cool. It, it would it would make for a really cool scene, but uh, ends up running him to a a casino of all places. I do have to call shenanigans on this shot where Domino shoots and manages to snap the barrel off the end of this guy's rifle. I, that's just not how a bullet, that's not how that works. I get it, she's got this probability manipulation thing, but I'm still, you know, there's certain things. I mean, I could accept a giant man that turns to metal, but shooting the ends off weapons, uh, shooting a barrel off with a pistol, it just, it doesn't make sense to me. Anyway, she busts up in here in the casino, starts looking around, sees more than a couple people with these cloaks on and is trying to figure it out. So, She's looking around, grabs somebody, and of course it's the wrong person. Well, then we get this. 
Lady pun playing old lady playing the slots and uh, hitting the button. You're just going to keep tapping it, and yeah, I'm due to win. Well, she says, "Well, let me play for you." Reaches over, hits the button, and triple sevens. Yeah, absolute jackpot, just cashing in, right? And with that stroke of luck, that's where we get the big reveal that the person that Domino has been chasing has is. I'm going to call her Ominod Domino but backwards. And this is absolutely hilarious because it wasn't like two days ago that Rob Liefeld was on a complete rant about derivative characters from Marvel. And this is basically Domino run through the reverse image machine. <laughs> Even with that being said, it could be a really fun character. This could be a really fun storyline. So I'm not just completely saying, ah, oh, this stinks. I've, I enjoyed the book. I really, I really like the emotional element between Colossus and Domino. I really like the way that both these characters have been through something. They've been through, I mean, a lot. And they're they're having to cope and they're having to deal with it. And I love the fact that they have each other to lean on during this. Um, that's been, you know, I've known several people with PTSD and them having that person that they could reach out to or that person that they could relate, relate to means so much so I, I do really appreciate that i mean as far as the rest of the book i i enjoyed the art there was no issues there um i think uh other than the hiccup with the what was going on with colossus did he die or did he not die i mean it was it was a good book there were a couple white pages the first one was beast and forge talking which was pretty interesting just them going back and forth but um it Basically, Beast is wanting to develop a listening device. Basically, what he's calling a listening stone that could... Um, just material that could absorb and report back to him without being detected. Like mosses and stuff that they could put in places like, you know, rocks on uh, the White House. Who, who knows where. Um, but that was one. And then the other white paper was about um, a mysterious piece of paper that had this scrolled across it. Um, that was the uh, the other white paper. And guys, that was pretty much it. This was a really good book. I highly recommend it. Go pick it up at your LCS. $3.99 pickup. Totally worth it. Oh, go uh, go over to uh, Thinking Critical's channel if you get if you got time. If you want to go help mess with somebody, just drop a uh, you know stacks was hashtag stacks was right or something like that down in the comments. I'm just messing with him. We got fake internet beef. I just tweeted out that him and my other buddy from the comic aficionados, Ash on Comics, we just spent the evening throwing his war medals off the off a bridge. So, anyways, it's uh it's good fun. Uh, I got a bunch of good friends over at the comic aficionados, and uh, if you visit my channel, uh, I got all their channels linked over on the side, and they're guys that actually talk about comic books, which is rare for comic book YouTubers nowadays. I recommend going and subscribing to Ash on Comics. Um, gateway into comics and even and even thinking critical all three of those guys they're great dudes they deserve your sub um, you'll probably spend more time watching their videos than mine that's okay because I'm all about supporting good folks anyways guys make sure you go register for that uh, X-Men Fantastic Four book over on my X-Men Fantastic Four video and guys make sure you uh, subscribe leave a like leave a comment down below and go visit these other guys at the channel guys I sincerely appreciate it. hope you have a good rest of the week and that's all I got real comic stacks out